Tell us about what happened. Why did you have to come back? Why did I have to come back? Well, um, I quit. And I quit because, um, as I talked about earlier, there was sort of this process of evolution in cycling that I was like, well, I'm going to do cycling collegiate cycling and then I was good at that and so then I did this and then I got invited to be on that team and they invited me to go to that race and I got invited to do this and so it was this stepping up but I'd always had like I said this ethic of environmentalism and sustainability and sort of raised from a young age um, to want to go out and save the world and I'm trying to remember right now there's a quote and I think it's by A.A. A. Milne the Winnie the Pooh author but it's sort of something along the lines of I'm I wake each morning torn between a desire to um, enjoy myself and to save the world. And that's not the exact words, but it's something like that. And that makes it hard to plan the day. And so for me, bike racing was great and it was fun, but it, at the time it wasn't really saving the world. And I wasn't sure that I, it was what I wanted to be doing. Even beyond that, I've never, you can ask my parents, I've never taken well to anybody telling me what to do. Like It's sort of one of those things that even if, some, even if I wanted to do it, if someone told me to do it, I'd all of a sudden not want to do it because like, I don't like being told what to do. And so in a way, this is sort of the world saying, you should go do cycling. See, you should go do cycling. And I was like, all right, that's cool, but I want it to be my decision. Um, so that's a very nice way of putting it. But basically, those sorts of elements led me to a place where I was saying, well, I'm not sure this is what I want to be doing. At the same time, um, you're sitting there and you're on this amazing skyrocketing career and you've got what every cyclist would want you know you've got the success it's coming naturally to you the world seems to be spread out before to you so how do you say in the midst of that you know what you guys I'm not, I'm not really sure about that and it seems really ungrateful and disrespectful and um I couldn't bring myself to say it and because I couldn't bring myself to say it I became more and more and more unhappy because I've also always been a very honest person and so not having people know how I really felt about it um, it was really challenging for me. And so I became more and more unhappy and unfulfilled by cycling simply because I hadn't decided that that was what I wanted to do. And in the midst of it, I couldn't step back and make that decision. And I um, developed over that time, um, I've talked about in a couple of previous interviews, but I developed an eating disorder. And that was less, often in cycling, people look at it and they'll say, well, naturally, that's got to be super common. It's a weight-based sport. Um, but for me, that was my way of getting out of it. So I wasn't saying, I want to lose weight to gain performance. And I mean, I wasn't saying any of this consciously, but the intention was not to lose weight to enhance performance. The intention was, I want to get out of this situation, and I can't say it, so I'm going to show you with my body in the manner of disappearing or in the manner of fading away or becoming weaker that I don't want to be in this situation, and maybe someone will see that. Maybe someone will remove the responsibility for me, or maybe... It'll all just go away, and I won't have to stand up and have the confrontation. Um, and so at the end of, or the middle of 2011, somewhere in there, um, I just quit. And I said I was done with it, and I wasn't going to do it anymore. Um, and people would always say, well, you know, you retired from cycling. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I didn't retire. I quit. And um, it took about a year. And... I was pretty, pretty clear at the time that quitting cycling was going to solve all my problems and I was going to turn into a happy-go-lucky person and I was going to knew, know what I wanted to do for a career and that um, everything would be easy and I'd be able to go to being a normal person, not an elite racer, in a very easy, seamless transition. And unfortunately, I realized about a year later that you know, whatever my problems, perceived problems were, I still had all the same problems as a person and I still had all the same struggles as a person. However, in addition to that, I missed bike racing, so I had a new problem. And so I figured, you know, we've all got our stuff to work on and our stuff to figure out, but while I'm figuring, out, figuring it out, I might as well um, race my bike as well. What do you see yourself doing after your cycling um, career? I'd love to do environmental advocacy work. Um, and so that could be on a local level, that could be on a global level. Um, I would love to run for Boulder City Council and be able to be involved. That's, that's I call that my 2017 plan, um, 2016 being the Rio Olympics. Um, but, um, and be involved in this community, um, work with sustainability. So that's sort of when I think about the things that capture my passion and sort of make my heart beat faster. Sustainability and um, 
working in the environment and working in the outdoors are those things. So maybe that means, I don't know, like I move to a farm and I work there, or maybe that means I do policy work with um, decision makers, or maybe that means I go off and just run around in the mountains and climb as many mountains as I can and don't drive my car. And so I don't know specifically, but I know that that's, um, that's sort of the vision and the emotions and the sentiments that go with my visions of the future.